Hi everyone, welcome to Happy to See Me. I'm Erica Kasupinen. This week it's a reality TV crossover because I'm talking to Sydney Latwako from Bachelor Nation. But before that, I'll tell you what I was happy to see this week. Well, this was actually a few weeks ago. So it was my little sister's birthday a few weeks ago. My sister and I are very close. If you've ever seen on Instagram, we're always hanging out. And for her birthday, my brothers and I decided, you know, she's a big music fan. Let's get her a record player. So we get her this record player. She's so excited. And then the next day we find out, it turns out it was the exact record player that was on her vision board. And I had never seen this vision board before. So I had no idea that that was going to happen. But it was nice to help make, you know, somebody's small dream come true like that. And I am really into vision boards, manifesting, all of that stuff. So I know it sounds woo-woo, but if you want to hear my thoughts on it, I'm actually trying to get somebody onto the podcast to talk a bit about it, I believe. And even if you think it's like too out there and too magical for me, it really boils down to feeling like you are worthy of having what you want. And I mean, if you feel worthy, then all of a sudden you can feel more confident and you can just go for the things that you want. Anyways, we can talk about manifesting and vision boards on another day. This episode, I am speaking with Sydney Latwako. She was on The Bachelor a few years ago and then she was on Bachelor in Paradise. And if you remember her, her shtick, quote unquote, was being the woman who has never had a boyfriend and now she's on The Bachelor. So we talk about what it's like having no romantic relationship experience and then going on this dating show and getting out of her comfort zone. We talk about what it's like having all of the cameras on you. We talk about all of the social media attention. And then we talk about how she ultimately chose herself and knew her self-worth and decided to leave the show. Plus, we talk about life after reality TV. And she gave me advice for podcasting. It was honestly such a lovely conversation. I think you'll find her really comforting and really inspirational, especially if you're someone who hasn't dated a lot. It'll help you to feel like you're perfectly normal because you are. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, review the show wherever you get your podcasts. You can subscribe to the show on YouTube if you're not watching us on YouTube already. And please follow the show on Instagram. It's at happy to see me pod. Truly any subscription, any review, whether you write the review or you just give us the five stars, it means a lot and it goes a long way. Anyhow, with that being said, let's get into it. Here is Sydney Latwako from Bachelor Nation. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, Sydney, welcome to the show. Hi, Erica. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you again. I feel like it's been a long time. It hasn't been. <laughs> yeah, a whole not even 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> we just can't get enough of each other. <laughs> just love it so much. <laughs> But I'm so excited to talk to you because I've never spoken to anyone from The Bachelor. And I feel like I go through these phases where I love The Bachelor and I'm super into it. And then I go through phases where I'm like, ugh, I can't watch this. It's all the same stuff. When I watched you on The Bachelor, it was definitely a phase where I was super into the show. And I remember you stuck out to me for many reasons. I think one thing that I find so interesting about The Bachelor is they – do a good job for better or for worse of kind of boiling down their contestants to their one line or their one shtick that describes them. So yours Mm -hmm. was girl who's never had a boyfriend. So when you were in casting and you shared that information initially, how were they responding to that? And did you have a feeling that that was going to be how they would describe you on the show? Yeah, I think it because it's maybe not so common that they were eating it up. And I mean, because it's just (laughs) what my story is. And I think it's also interesting because I was living in New York City at the time, which also lends to be a really hard place to date. I don't want to say that for everyone's experience, but that was definitely my experience. So they were just really interested in my dating history. And because I was still trying to date and I was still trying to put myself out there. I was just really not finding anyone. Yeah, anyone substantial. (laughs) Um, I had a lot of like first dates or like little flings or whatever. So they were really interested in that. And at the time too, I was dancing for the Knicks, the basketball team. They were like, why don't you date the players? So it was this whole thing. So yeah, so they were super interested in that. When you go into the interview, it's a whole like deep dive into your love life, what you're looking for, what your history is. And I think with my case in my season, I was on Colton's season of The Bachelor. And because his storyline was he was the virgin, 
I think that because I had never dated someone before, I think they thought we could connect in that way. So I do think that they do set up this season based on whoever the bachelor or bachelorette is. That's how they cast it because whoever they think is going to maybe align with him or like push him or whatever reason that they have, I think they definitely take that into consideration. Right. Because I feel like on your season, there was the person who's never kissed anyone or there was religious people since he was the virgin. So do you Mm -hmm. think that if it was a different bachelor, you might not have been the right fit for the show? I don't know if I would have been cast if it was a different bachelor, but I also think that I would have had a much different experience if it was a different bachelor. I mean, my season in in particular was very unique because he and Colton ended up coming out like years later. So I think during the whole season with myself and many of the other girls, there was a strong disconnect between connecting with him. And I don't know what exactly that thing was, but he always just felt very closed off and very like surface level with the way he would talk to you and his answers. So I had a hard time connecting with him. So I think because I, he was friendly and like a really nice guy and had an easy time talking to him, but it wasn't like I had to really get deep into my emotions because we were just having nice conversations. So I think for me, for the season, it was almost like easy because I had gone into it almost nervous that I had never been in a relationship before. Now I'm doing it on this huge scale on national television. Am I going to make a fool of myself? I don't actually know how I am when I am in love. Like, am I a crazy person when I am in love? Mm -hmm, I don't know mm -hmm. because I haven't been there yet. So it could have been a very much different season for me because of The Bachelor that I had. I felt like I could be pretty composed and just have a good time. But if it may be I like fall on head over heels in love with this guy. It could have been really messy for me. I don't know. But again, I don't know if they would even have casted me if it was someone I think at the time it was either going to be Blake or Jason or or Colton. So it was like the three of them were the ones that they were deciding between and it ended up being Colton. So. Wow. And OK, it's you mentioned earlier that you were nervous to be on TV. You were nervous because you had never fallen in love. You don't know what you're like in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I think I personally could never do a dating show. I've had people ask me if I would ever go on The Bachelor or anything. And I've said, absolutely not. Yeah. I think going on Survivor is enough vulnerability. And so I never talk about my own dating a lot. This is a first for the podcast. And it's because there's nothing to talk about. So I actually haven't been in a relationship for a long time. I've had boyfriends before. Mm-hmm. I've dated here and there. I just have never met anybody that, like, as you said, is just the the right person. And I think I've never yeah. felt bad about it. I've never, I don't know, I've never been afraid that I'm going to end up alone. I think I've just always had faith. I'll meet the right person when the right time mm-hmm. comes. And I remember watching your season. I'm like, okay, this is somebody who also – hasn't been in a lot of, I guess in your your case, hasn't been in a romantic relationship. I'm like, oh, that's cool to mm-hmm. see someone like that on TV. But then yeah. I feel like the way that since it was pointed out, it made me stop and think. I'm like, wait, do I have to feel a type of way about me and my life and how I'm living? Like is, is the way that I am not common? What was it like for you and how that element of your story was portrayed on the show? Was that something that you were – proud of? Was it something that just it, it was the way it was? Or did did you feel mm-hmm. like another type of way about it? Yeah, I was definitely something I was proud of. It's also something that I didn't necessarily try to make happen. Like I really did try and date. I really wanted a boyfriend. I really wanted this for my life, but it really was not happening like in mm-hmm. any level. So I didn't mean to get to I was 27 when I went on the show and I didn't mean to get that to that age and not have ever have a relationship, but that's just the way it worked for me. And I think the maybe the issue that I had on the show is I felt okay about it. Like I was proud of that fact that I didn't just like settle for someone that wasn't connected to me or that I didn't just like fall into a relationship or have a bunch of heartbreak. Cause I know for me, for myself, I'm just like a very sensitive person. And if I were to have a bunch of heartbreak, I don't think I would recover as fast as other people may have have. So I that I knew that about myself. So I almost put like a a wall up in a way just to protect myself because I am so sensitive. But then on the show, I think I was almost counted out a lot because people thought because I wasn't in a relationship before that I wouldn't be ready for something serious or I wouldn't know how to be in a relationship or all the fears that I had deep down about myself that I wouldn't know how to do it or that I wouldn't no one would want to date me because I didn't have enough quote unquote experience. But I think from going through that, I 
I understood about myself that I I don't have to be in a lot of relationships to know how to be in a relationship because now I am I'm engaged to my fiance and he was my first relationship. I think what there's like a a perception of what you're supposed to do before you get in a serious relationship and I think it's different for everyone and I I really know myself and I was just looking for that one and done kind of person. I wasn't someone that I was like, I need, need to explore every type of a relationship before I get into the one. Everyone's going to be different. So I think it's really just knowing yourself. I think especially I noticed it when I went to Paradise, which is the show after um, The Bachelor, where they have people from every different season coming in and dating each other. I think especially there, I felt very like counted out because people didn't take me seriously or didn't look at me as a serious prospect because I didn't have enough experience in their eyes. But I mean, now that I'm in a relationship, all that fear went away. I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. it's just like I've been in relationships before. I've had friendships. I've had I've gone on dates. I I mean, relationships you build with like your family. I've had that connection before. It's just now on a different scale. And yes, there are some things that I didn't know or like are different for me that I'm learning along the way. But I was when I got into this relationship, I was like, okay, if there's like some unwritten rules or things that I don't know about relationships, just like give me a heads up because this is my first experience. And luckily with my fiance, he was like very willing to meet me where I was at, go at a slower pace at first because I was just like towing the line of what how I felt comfortable in this new dynamic. But from my experience, and I feel like for anyone, you can have relationships or find a serious relationship and not have to have like 20 boyfriends before. But again, everyone's going to be different. It's like music to my ears, truly. And I love how you say that just because you didn't have a romantic relation up until this point, you had experience in other relationships. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of, you know, the moment on your season when you tell Colton, I'm not getting what I need from you. I'm going to go. And I just remember that so clearly because I'm thinking, okay, this is someone who was positioned on the show as the person who is, quote unquote, lacking experience when it comes to romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. But then you were really asserting yourself and you were showing boundaries and you were saying what you wanted. And even on Mm -hmm. Paradise, I know there was that – there was like that storyline with that guy and you were trying to get him to kiss you. And I'm like, okay, she's the person who – again, quote unquote, doesn't have experience, but she's also communicating clearly what she wants here. So Mm -hmm. how were you able to really build that confidence in yourself and have those boundaries, even if you didn't have the quote unquote traditional relationship experience going into the show? Yeah. I I think it's so funny because people would think that I would just be jumping at everyone and wanting to fall into the first relationship I could find. But I think what I did do all those times I went on dates and was trying to figure it out, I was always reevaluating with myself. I would go on a date with Guy and be like, okay, what did I like about him? What did I not like about him? What qualities am I looking for? So like as I would go on these little one-off dates or these random hinge dates or whatever I was doing in the city, I would try and take note of like what it was that I was looking for. So I think I had a clear picture or an idea of what the guy would be like or what would work for me. So I I went into The Bachelor knowing that. And I also made a point of, because I was doing this really scary thing for me, I was going on national TV to date something that I've never really done before. Mm -hmm. I made it uh, like a challenge for myself almost to really try and put myself out there and figure out like even more of that information and what I'm looking for. So I think with Colton too, when I was on The Bachelor... I wanted it to be as real of an experience as I could have because it was for me like a master course or mastermind course in dating. That's how I approached it. Some other people approach it different ways. but That was like my goal for going into the show. So because I wanted so much out of it, it, I always tried a little harder at each little meeting I had with him because when you're on I was only on group dates. So you only get like 15, 20 minutes to talk to him. So every time you go in, you're like, okay, I'm going to talk about this today. This is what I'm coming to the table with. What are you bringing? And I felt like every time he would just answer me like, I don't know, like politician style, just Mm -hmm. very like skim the surface, nothing below. And I was like, oh, I just feel, I don't know. I, I would feel leaving like fine, but not like, oh my God, I got so much farther with him. He's this and this and this. 
<clears throat> which can be really hard if you go and talk to your friends and they say that they're falling for him and that the, he's so dreamy and all these things. And you're just kind of like, well, my experience wasn't like that. So that's interesting. So I kept doing that. And the reason why I left when I did is because we were getting to hometowns, which is when things really get start, start to get really serious on The Bachelor. And I knew in the back of my mind, I've never taken anyone home to meet my family. And for a good reason, there was never anyone that I wanted to do that with. And I knew that would be really special. And if I were to bring someone home to my parents, they would be like, okay, well, she's going to marry this person because she's never done this before. And if she feels this strongly about this guy to have him meet us, then she really cares about him. But I wasn't there yet. And I knew that was going to be like in a week or so. And I was, I felt like we could, if I really pushed him, I could get to that next level. So I was just taking it really seriously. And when I got to that final day, I was there. One, I did not plan to leave at all. It was just kind of laid out for me where that was the only decision I could make. It's, it was either like settle for this guy who's not giving me what I want, what I would need outside of this reality experience. Like if we were in the real world, I wouldn't hang out, stay with this guy. So why would I do that here? So I think it was all those factors that came into play. And I, I just was so clear on what I was looking for. And I was really proud of myself that I had gotten to that point in my life. And again, not settled for something less than what I knew I wanted and what I deserved. So yeah, when Colton and I had that conversation towards the end, it was so clear. It was like, okay, well, I just poured my heart out. I told you what I was looking for. You know who I am and what I'm here to offer and what, and I'm asking you to get there with me or fight for this or something. And he gave me just a nice, a really nice answer. And I was like, ugh, I can't be here anymore. Like I can't continue on because I can't bring this guy home to my family and be like, here's this guy that's super nice. I don't really know him that well, but here's the first guy you're going to ever, ever meet. I just couldn't do that to my family, especially. So it was just very clear for me at the time. I was like, gotta go. And then the Matt Donald of it all, the guy on Paradise, I was just like, I felt like everyone's friend once I when I was in Paradise. It's an interesting experience. It does feel very high schooly, where you're just like the popular girls are here, popular guys are here, and everyone else is just kind of figuring out where they stand. And there's new people coming in it all all the time. So there's new opportunities to connect with someone or to go on dates with people. By that point, I was like so far into it. It had been I'd been there for like a month, and I really wasn't connecting with a lot of people. I had like little flings. Um, but nothing really substantial. And I was just kind of fed up at that point. And this guy I, I s could see myself with, I was attracted to him and he was just like super nervous all the time. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just, I need to get him to kiss me. Cause I need to know if we can go any further with this. Cause I'm honestly, I was just like bored by that point. And <laughs> paradise is a special place. But, um, yeah, I think that that whole scene that you see where I'm like trying to get him to kiss me. I, I like literally was that up by that point. I was like, all right, <laughs> figure it out, dude. <laughs> I am bored and we need to see if this, we can take this one step further because we haven't even like held hands by this point. So yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's honestly, I admire your bravery and putting yourself out there and then your bravery in saying, okay, this is what I want. Cause I feel like in that situation, especially there's so much, it's a weird power dynamic where you need to get someone else to like you for you to stay on the show. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like it could potentially be easy to try to convince somebody that they like you. But in your case, you're like, yeah. no, like it's whether or not I feel something for you too. Mm -hmm. And I think on top of that, knowing that it's the reality TV of it all, I'm sure that one can feel tempted to want to stay and, you know, go to the next phase and go to hometowns mm -hmm. for the sake of staying on the show. And on The Bachelor, I love the the idea everyone talks about being there for the right reasons. Like it yeah. seemed like you were there for the right reasons. Do you feel like you were? Yeah, I definitely went into it for the right reasons. I think if I were to do that situation ever again, I think people – knew way more about The Bachelor because I would kind of watch it. I wasn't like a super fan. There's people there that like knew way more about it, were way more prepared, knew all the things and were able to like work the system more. I was just kind of like a deer in headlights. And I was really trying to go into it with the best intentions and for the right reasons, for lack of a better term. But I quickly realized that there's so many reasons why people go on the show and it's so different. So I was kind of overwhelmed by all of that. Um, but I just I'm not someone that can fake things at all. I just really can't. Mm -hmm. And people can see right through me if I'm trying to like 
be fake about how I'm feeling. So I just had to like be myself, which I know you can relate to very much with how you approach Survivor. I was just going to be myself and get what I could out of that experience. What's What I was a little upset about was that I wanted it to be this like really challenging thing where I fell for someone and I really like moved forward at that part of my life. But I left it like, uh, I mean, that was, I was good. I was brave. It was nice for me to see that I could put myself out there, but I was like, I didn't really move forward in the love aspect of my life. So I still felt like uh, at the end, um, but everyone's experience is definitely different in that way. It sounds like in terms of the love part of it, your initial expectations weren't met, but I'm sure you got so much out of the show. Yeah. Is there something about the dynamic of being on the show that was not what you expected having previously just been a viewer? Yeah. I'm trying to think of like how I viewed the show before and how I want it because I would just watch it whenever my roommate had it on. It wasn't like, oh my God, it's Monday and I have to watch a show. So I think I just was really <laughs> not prepared for a lot of it. I think in, in any reality situation, being on camera like that is kind of aggressive and jolting, especially when you go into the experience and you're alone in your hotel for a week and then all of a sudden you're on this set and there's cameras in your face and all the stuff is happening. I was used to the cameras kind of just because I grew up dancing and would be in in front of a camera and things like that. But being vulnerable like that was a whole other experience for me. I just, I think the downtime of it all was surprising to me because you see the show and it's like glamorous dates and you're jetting off here and you're doing all those things, which we were able to do on our season as well. But so much of it is just like sitting around doing absolutely nothing. Like we would spend on rose ceremony days. You just, all you have is the rose ceremony, which starts at like 9 p.m. and goes until 1, 2 in the morning. And oh you just have all day. You're just getting ready all day because you're so bored and you have nothing else to do. So you're just doing your nails, you're doing your hair, you're redoing your hair, you're doing your makeup. So very different from Survivor. Just a lot of downtime, a lot of just being around the same girls all the time, which I think people are surprised that you're dating one guy and why are all these girls such good friends after it? It's because you spend most of your time with the girls in the house. You don't spend, unless you're on a one-on-one -on -one date, you really get like 15, 20 minutes on a group date with The Bachelor. So you're really spending most of your time while you're there making friends. So that aspect of it is nice. But then also when you're on the season, you're trying to, you're hoping your friend doesn't go home because then mm -hmm. you're down a friend in the house. So just interesting dynamics like that. But yeah, I just, I would say it's pretty similar from what you see on the show, but I wouldn't, people are always asked if like the drama is real or whatever. I think in those heightened situations, naturally dramatics are going to happen. You're all dating the same guy. You're, really tired. You're drinking long hours. You're, I mean, they feed you, but you're just like in this tight ball <laughs> gown for way too long. It's just like all those elements add together and it's very easy to end up in those situations. Oh my God. So when you came back from filming, were you just exhausted? And was it weird adjusting to real life after you came back? Yeah. I mean, you're in a straight up bubble for a month and it's just like funny because your parents don't really know where you are. Luckily, there's this guy, Reality Steve. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yeah, but yeah. But <laughs> he tracks where everyone is. So my parents were following him try to try and figure out where the heck I was in the country. So you're just really in this bubble for however long that you're there until you're, the bubble gets popped. The night that I went home, I was not prepared to leave. And if you are if you leave like that, you can't go back to the hotel and pack your stuff. Someone has to do it for you. So my stuff was everywhere. It was not prepared. Lost a lot of items that I no. never got back. Um, and then they put you in a car and they take you to another hotel. And then for my case, I, when I left, I was in Vietnam. So it was in a whole other country. And then they probably booked my flight last second. And <laughs> I left the next day. And I ended up in some airport in a place in China. I'm not even sure what city I was in, but I was there for like 10 hours. So I did like a multi-day course meal throughout the airport. I had breakfast here. I went to lunch here. I, I don't even know who gave, gave me money. I have no idea. This is very... So everything... Reality comes in really fast. And one mm -hmm. of the things that I remember very much, because when I went on my season, one of the things was like, I, I was a girl that quit her job too. And my job at the time was dancing for the Knicks. So I, I couldn't go, I couldn't do the season and do um, the show. So I had to pick between the two. So I had to leave that job. And it was devastating because I opened my phone. I had had my phone for a month and I opened my phone. The first thing I see is it was like opening season for basketball. 
And we had done a photo shoot right before I left for the season of, for like the Knicks dancers, or whatever. And the first thing I saw, I swear to God, the first thing I saw was the placard that we had shot, but with me photoshopped out of it. So it was no. like, uh, <laughs> it was like a knife to the heart. So that was tough. And I, I just didn't want to go back to real life quite yet. So luckily I was able to go home to my parents and I stayed there for like a month and really didn't tell people I was home yet. But some people saw that my phone was back on. In my case too, it was interesting because they, some of my friends, a lot of my friends knew that I was there because they had me go on the Ellen show randomly. They had three girls that they picked from like the first week that we were there to go meet the bachelor quote unquote and play this game on the Ellen show. So a lot of people did see that. And my parents were very happy that they had let me do that because Mm -hmm. then they didn't have to lie about where I was. So people at least knew that I was on the show. That was a rare case. But um, yeah, when I got back, it it was, it's a, you want to adjust to Mm -hmm. real life. So I took a month off, which was nice. (laughs) Yeah. I don't blame you. I, I was in quarantine when I came back to Canada and I tried to stay hidden and Mm -hmm. not tell anybody until my two week quarantine was up. And then it becomes really overwhelming. Like, what was the gap between when you filmed the show and then when the show aired? So when I came home, I think it was right before, like, Thanksgiving, I think. And then the show aired for us in January. And it's really interesting because you have this experience when you're filming it. You think, okay, I said this here. I did this here. This this will maybe be my storyline. Da, 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 da. But you don't know until they're airing it. So every day on Monday nights was when the show aired. I would have such insane anxiety. Like w- woke up like, oh God, it's a show day. Just so much anxiety because you really don't know how it's going to go. They don't, you don't know what you're going to see. Like your producer will maybe si- send you a text like, hey, this is what's happening this week. But really, honestly, you don't know until you see it. And I would just wake up like that, like crazy anxiety. And then we would watch a show and then I would be wired after and then go to sleep and you'd wait for another week of it. Um, What's interesting, too, is like you don't know what you're going to see. So then if something that you do that people don't like happens on an episode, then you're getting an influx of DMs of like you shouldn't have done this, 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 like whatever people say about whatever they think about you. So that was a roller coaster that month and a half that I was on the show is a lot. Um, yeah. And but I I didn't really I told my parents about the experience generally and like my very close friends, but you're not really technically supposed to tell anyone about anything, but that's <laughs> they knew at least. But most for my most of my friends, they didn't really know. <laughs> it's such a weird dynamic watching those shows. Like you described it as a roller coaster. I would describe it the exact same yeah. way. It's like you're on a roller coaster. So there's the up and then there's the drop and then you're doing the zigzags, Mm. but you can't get off the roller coaster for weeks. So it's like once you think you feel better, all of a Mm. sudden, boom, it goes again. And it's like, yeah, like months of feeling like that. So I can totally relate. It's wild. And then what happened right after the show finished airing? Because I feel like The Bachelor, unlike any other reality franchise, they do this great job of almost like creating this star system around their former contestants. Mm -hmm. And then there's gossip around it. And then I don't know, there's this, and then there's paradise. And it's kind of like this whole ecosystem of like the quote unquote stars from bachelor nation. So when your show finishes airing and you're, you're on the cast, like, do you, do people hope that they can kind of get into that or like, what is that like? Um, It's interesting (laughs) because Depending on who you were on the season, they show a lot of you or they show pretty much none of you. And I felt like they showed me, but I was more of a narrator for the season. So that's what's interesting. Like you have all this anxiety and then you see yourself like twice on one two hour episode. So it's interesting because you don't really know how it's going to go. So yeah, for some people, they have like full careers that happen from the show, which is really insane. And I think when the first when the show first started airing many many years ago obviously social media wasn't a thing and that wasn't a factor but now it's without saying it on the show like obviously that is a huge factor that people go on it for that reason or for the right reasons or whatever it is so when you get off of it you're automatically put into this like hierarchy of like who's really popular and then who's not so popular and that plays into even paradise with who who they're putting on to that next show which is the show that happens after the bachelor so it's it feels like a like a popularity contest and mm-hmm. if you don't have a strong 
sense of yourself, it, it's very easy to get in your head or like compare yourself to other girls from your season or your friends or whatever. Like, why is she here? Why is she getting this opportunity? Da, da, da. And I think that an, on any scale happens to every single person that goes into the house, whether you are leaving night one or you you end up like in the final four. It's that just it's lends itself to that comparison and feeling jaded or whatever. So I think that's really challenging for people that go on reality TV. Plus also the fact that sometimes you get like hate on the internet. That there's so much that you're not prepared for going into that show because you go into the show and you're a normal person. You do leave as a normal person, but you have more eyes on you and people judging you for things that you did or have their perceptions of you, which is challenging to take on when you've never experienced something like that before. So I think a lot of people that go on reality TV in general, it's like a, it's a whirlwind and it can be really bad. It can be really good. Um, so I think my experience with it, I was kind of somewhere in the middle. Like I, people liked me from the show, but they didn't really know much about me. They people, I had really kind DMs, which was nice. Like people, because I left the show on my own, people like helped, it helped them in their own dating lives or, or standing up for themselves in relationships. So that wasn't necessarily my intention, but it was really nice to hear things like that. So people were rooting for me, but I wasn't like the popular girl. And I felt like that same way in paradise. So the, for the last two years, like right after the show, I think I really struggled with like, the, what everyone kind of goes through like oh I could have done more I could have been this or I could have fallen in love all these things that like could have should have would have could have happened but um it's nice when that starts to die down a little bit and you you figure out oh like m my whole life doesn't have to be reality tv like I went on this experience it was really cool I I got this and this out of it but I don't have to be like you know famous from it it's mm -hmm. it's actually okay <laughs> and it's probably better <laughs> off that I'm not so but once you get right after right after the show, it's really it's a mind fuck of yeah. who you are, what you're supposed to be doing with this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like everybody on the show experiences this high where, oh my gosh, I have all this attention. Everyone knows who I am. And even though you're getting mean DMs, you're getting great DMs too. And you're getting, mm -hmm. you know, all these followers and all these comments. And then it's it's weird the come down from it. I mean, you were on the show. The come down is real. <laughs> Of, sorry, it was like four or five years ago you were on the show, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was 27 and I'm 31. So, yeah. Oh, my. Okay. So then now that the four or five years have passed, like what was it mm -hmm. like the whole come down from it? Was there a certain amount of time that passed and then you reached the point where you were like, ah, you know what? I'm okay. I don't need the attention from reality TV anymore. Yeah. I mean, I just had to be realistic because I think what happens too is if you really try and hold on to something that's slipping out of your fingers, it can get, you can do really dumb things to like try and hold on to it. And I didn't want to be like that. And I think also 2020 happened. So the whole world got turned upside down anyways. I think it just was like a natural progression for me. I also did the tour. So they Bachelor did like a, a live tour that they took from city to city. It started in 2020 and then it got turned off because of COVID and it came back like two years later. So I got to do that. So in a way, it was like still in the world a little bit, but it was very different the second time around doing tour because it's been so long since I had been on the show. It was just like a completely different experience. I was like, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> they don't know me really. It's just like, wow, okay, got it. So it's, a, it's humbling, you know? But again, I think it's just being realistic. Like, okay, I was on a show four years ago. Obviously, these people aren't going to know who I am anymore and that's okay. And I think what helped me with all of that is always just like putting it in perspective for myself. Like, what did I gain from this show? I gained this confidence. I was able, I moved to LA right after the show and I went on tour and I, I did all, I had all these really cool experiences. I evolved from it. I became a stronger person from it. And instead of focusing on like, oh, I didn't get this thing that she got it. Like, I think if you shift your focus to like the positive of what your what the experience actually gave you and in my case I met my fiance through going on the show not from him being on paradise or anything but he watched my season when I was 27 so he watched it with his roommate for whatever reason he really liked me from the show and because he liked me he knew I was on paradise so he continued to watch paradise which was sh like in summer 
And he had would reach out to me every so often, not like creepy or anything like that. I would put up like question stickers and or get involved with like my audience on social media and he would just send me really funny things. So I always knew of like I recognized him. I was like, oh, that's the guy who says really funny things like, OK. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until 2020 that the world got shut down and I started paying closer attention to who this person was. I had recognized him from before. And we some for some reason just got talking back and forth during the pandemic. And then we started texting. And then from there, we started FaceTiming for three months. And we created this relationship online, which was really random. But And now I ended up moving in with him a few months later, the whole thing. But I wouldn't have met him if I hadn't gone on a show. So if I mm-hmm. focus on the things I didn't get, I wouldn't get things like what I have now, which is my fiance in this whole new life, which was crazy because I went on that dating show. And I ended up in a relationship, just not how I thought I would from the show. But yeah, I think what again, just reshifting your focus to the positives that you got out of it versus like the glass half full kind of thing or glass half empty. <laughs> I feel like this story of how you met your fiance is so wild. Like it's a fan DM'd you is if you boil it down to it, that's what <laughs> happened. And you were open to it. Yeah. And then look where I got you. Do you think that the experience of going on The Bachelor and looking for love in an unconventional way made you more open to getting to know your now fiance and and going on that journey? For sure. I think, one, I needed to be thrown out of my comfort zone, which the show definitely did. And because I took such a huge chance on myself, I was able to do that way easier with taking a chance on him. It could have gone really bad. Like, it could have gone really wrong. but Luckily, it didn't. So I think, yeah, I was in a space from my experience on the show with like trusting myself in situations and trusting my gut and my instinct, which is was what led me to him. So I think, yeah, that experience definitely helped me fall into this relationship and not like freak out or push him away or anything like that. And it shows that, hey, things happen at the right timing. Uh, and yeah, mm-hmm. like as you said, you were a one and done. You had your one relationship. It ended up being the one. So it – and I think it speaks to how you – um, knowing what you wanted and knowing what you were worth. And even if from the outside it looked like, oh, it wasn't the traditional steps people take, it, it worked. It paid off. Uh, so it's amazing to see that. Mm-hmm. And also thinking about how your life has changed since the show. So you were a New York Knicks dancer before the show. Are you still a dancer now mm-hmm. or have have your aspirations changed since the show? Yeah. I mean, I've been so many things I feel like since the show. It's crazy. So yeah, <laughs> at the time of the show, I was living in New York City. I was dancing for the Knicks. I won on the show. I decided once I was on the show, I was like, I'm not happy in New York City anymore. It took me like pulling myself out of this the city to realize I've been there for nine years. I need a change. So my plan was to move to LA, which I did. I did. I moved to LA right before, right after Paradise was, which was in June. <laughs> and from there, I lived in LA for a few months, and then I went on tour with The Bachelor, and I had an apartment. And then I went on tour, and then the pandemic happened, and I paid for my apartment for a year and didn't live there at all. Um, so I went home to my family, and I ended up meeting Nick. So I kind of just flowed with where life was pushing me. So currently. I am living in Ohio, never thought I'd ever live here ever or even visit. So it's just, it's interesting where life will take you in in general. So I'm here now. I I danced recently. I did the tour the second time and I felt like that was like my last tour with like performing like that. Who knows? I'm always open to opportunities if they come my way. Uh, During the pandemic, I did start podcasting. I had a different podcast with another person, but I've just realized I like it better on on my own and doing it in my space. The reason why I got into podcasting was because I always just love listening to it. And whenever I felt very alone or like I needed advice or things like that, I would always put a podcast on, go on a walk and just feel so much better after. Um, so I wanted what I wanted my podcast and what I do to do that for other people to help them feel not alone or whatever you needed in your day. That's where I started with it. So now currently I have my podcast. I'm still doing social media stuff. I just really love the creativity of that and living in Ohio. And I, at the time or a couple of weeks ago, I was still uh, teaching fitness, which I do that as well, but that just the studio closed. So I'm not doing that at this moment. So I think for me right now, I'm just kind of seeing where life is taking me. I, I know my fiance and I want to go into business and do something together at some point. So we're always just like throwing ideas around of what that's going to be. So yeah, I, I, I think I'm just a person that 
just goes with the flow of, of that. It has like dreams and aspirations, but I think life presents things to you and can take you on these different directions that you didn't really even know could be possible. So that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool to see how a crazy experience like The Bachelor can close some doors that you thought were working for you, but then mm-hmm. open up, you know, this whole other breadth of experiences and opportunities for you. And so for the record, your show does bring comfort. So the reason I actually started listening to your show, one of my girlfriends, she's a huge Bachelor fan and she's a baker. So she spends hours where she's just head down doing things with her hands. Mm-hmm. So she had told me to listen to your show because she's like, oh, I listen to it all the time when I'm baking because oh, she has so nice. just such a soothing voice. So mission accomplished, you are bringing that comfort to oh, people. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's my thing too. With I know podcasting is really hard to get into and get going. So I at the end of the day, I'm like, well, if I make one person's day better or one person hears one thing, then that's what matters. It doesn't matter if I'm like famous from it or anything crazy. It's just like, you know, it, at the end of the day, if I just help one person out, like I would have wanted back in the day when I started first started pro- listening to podcasts, then that is worth it for me. Okay. Yes. I'm so glad that you said that because (laughs) my last question for you, it's selfishly a question for me personally, Mm -hmm. because I just started this podcast at the beginning of this year. So what's advice you have for someone like me who's starting out in their podcast or even somebody who is starting out on their passion project or their creative Mm -hmm. venture when they're in that beginning stages of it? Totally. Yeah. I think especially with podcasting, you're starting something on your own like this in a media space. It's really easy to compare yourself because there's data. You can look at the charts. You can do all this stuff. But I think if you start something and it is your passion product, like project, like you said, I think really when at the end of the day, going back to why you started, what is this for? Is it is it for helping people? Is it for like practicing your interviewing skills? Whatever it's for, I would lean on that and not put so much pressure on the end of it all or like it needs to make me this much money now. I think a lot of people actually start podcasts and stop because they think they that they're going to start the show, they're going to be famous from it and everything's going to fall into place and they're going to be an overnight success. And there's so many examples of that, but that's not really the case for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And it takes like really putting some time and effort, figuring out the editing of it all, like getting guests. All, there's so much to figure out and grow with. So I would just say like baby steps and keep going back to your why is always what's helped me. I've been doing this now for a while and I still, I wish it was obviously like much further along than it is. But again, going back to, okay, well, if it's helping people, I still enjoy it. It's teaching me all these skills, then why would I stop doing it? So that is where I'm at right now with podcasting and all of it. But I I still love it. I still enjoy it. Like I do a lot of episodes with my fiance too. And I have so much fun talking to him and we have conversations that we probably wouldn't have in everyday life, which is really nice. I just love talking to experts and people that I can pick their brains. I just think it's, I just really love it. So yeah, I think for longevity and continue with it. Just continue going back to your why. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And following the why, if you do that, then all of the other more material, successful indicators, Mm -hmm. let's say, those will fall into place if you're following your passion. Do you have a dream guest that you want on your podcast? (sighs) Oh, That's a good question. Well, actually, I'm I'm obsessed with people like Joanna Gaines and people who do like home stuff. So any like Joanna Gaines would be an amazing guest or people who have had like take their passions and create all of this good from it. They don't just take their passion and do like their one thing just to make money. They create so much good from it. So someone like her would be a dream guest. She's amazing. Um, So yeah, that's that's what I'm sticking with. My dream guest is Joanna Gaines putting that out there. (laughs) Okay, Joanna, you heard it. Get on something to share right now. (laughs) Sydney, it was so great talking to you. I feel like I could ask you questions forever. Um, But for now, can you tell everybody where to find you and all of that fun stuff? Yeah, this was amazing. I loved it. You can find me, my podcast. We have episodes every Wednesday. Uh, If you need something that you need to hear, something that we'll share with you, I would highly recommend listening. Um, Every Wednesday, you can find us at Something Share Podcast on Instagram. Me, I'm at Sydney Lotuaco, L-O-T-U-A-C-O on Instagram and TikTok, if I can keep getting myself to make videos. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
Amazing. And I am, I don't know if it'll have aired yet, but I'm going to be on Sydney's podcast yes. too. So if you want to hear more of the conversation between us, I will be there. Otherwise, check her out. She just, yeah, has such amazing guests. It's just so soothing. It's so calm. So make sure you check out her pod. Sydney, thank you for chatting today. <laughs> Thanks for having me anytime. Um, if you want more questions ever with podcasting, you just let me know. I'm happy to help. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I will take you up on that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Just DM me. <laughs>